Hello everyone, welcome to Spirits Hello. of the Seas uh, Zoom. My name is Sato Lindgren, I'm a Talk to Entities Facilitator and Access Certified Facilitator and I'm really excited. I'm like, I've been waiting for this Zoom for um, since I put it on my calendar, which was like a month ago. And when I have put it on my calendar and I got really excited, I started wondering, why did I put it like a month away? Like now I have to wait this long to actually do this Zoom. And then with all the stuff that has been happening in the world lately, I was like, ah, maybe I need something. Maybe I put this Zoom on exactly the moment that we needed to have this Zoom to create something different, to create a bit more peace and ease in the world. So um, what do you all guys know that you have been pretending that you don't know that if you would allow yourself to know it would create more peace in your world? Ah, and everything that is can be destroyed and I credit all. So that was the access consciousness clearing statement. I'll be using that in this Zoom probably quite a lot. If you don't know what that is, you could go to theclearingstatement.com and there's explanation on what it is. But you actually don't need to know what it is or how it works, it will still work. So, um, and this Zoom is actually part of a Zoom series that I started in, I think, September last year. I, it was supposed to be just one Zoom. I just had an idea, hey, let's do this Zoom about the spirits of the earth in the northern um, countries. I live in Finland and then we have all these other Nordic countries like Sweden and Norway and Iceland that all have this very rich mythology and all these stories and things about fairies and all that kind of nature spirits. So I was like, huh, let's do a Zoom about this. And then somehow it has grown into this series that this is now the sixth part of, I think. So we've been traveling around the world and with different areas and um, pretty something different. They have been very, all these different Zooms, they've been very different and they all have some really cool bits and pieces of information. So I really highly recommend to go and see the other parts as well if this is interesting to you. Um, I myself was actually just listening to one of them, the, um, I think it was the Spirits of Balkan, where we talked a lot about trees. So yeah, I just, yeah, I love doing the Zooms. I'm so happy that you're all here and what can we create and change today? Um, so you can all ask questions if you have any, you can either write them in the chat or you can come off mute or you can let your translator know when they can ask the question. And, um, and how much fun can we have today? Um, if you don't know what talk to the entities is, because this is a kind of talk to the entities Zoom, it's part of Access Consciousness. It's one of the special or special topic classes where we kind of focus on uh, one area or one set of tools. But toxic entities is not just about dead people because that's what a lot of people think. They hear about entities, they're like, oh, you know, dead people, why, why would I want to talk with dead people? And like, it's just something that I can look at when I'm like just about to die myself. Um, but actually it includes everything and it's not just about dead people or entities or nature spirits. It is actually just a different way to look at the world, look at your life and have tools to actually apply into all areas of your life. And one of the things that I really love about Topsy Entities classes is that they give you this um, sense that nothing is greater than you are. You can be the most dominant being and entity in your life. Nothing has to be scary. Nothing has to uh, control you. But you get to be the one who is aware of everything and has the tools to actually um, make it easy for you. So that was my introduction to talk to entities. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But otherwise, let's just go to the topic of the seas. Um, yeah, I was just so freaking excited about this one, so I'm not quite sure which way to start. Does anybody have any uh, questions right um, at the beginning? I can hear some scrambling. Well, if we don't have any questions. Uh, Satu, 
I think I can ask, uh, what do you mean with the spread of the seed? Uh, we said that. Uh, uh, we have a question in Slovenia. Can we? Can uh, I'll have Arce's question first, and then we'll let yeah. Listen. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I put myself off media. So there we go. Yeah, Arce, you want to ask a question? Yeah, actually, Satu, what do you mean uh, with the spread of the seas? Ah, good question. Yeah, so because um, in toxic entities, it's not just about people who are dead or whatever that is, all those, because um, we all actually, we're all entities, but we just have bodies right now. Because the most broad definition of an entity is an energy that is defined, whether it has a body or it doesn't have a body. So um, everywhere where this is already getting to um, this part in your brain where you can't define it, but you try to define it, can we just turn and get it? Rather wrong, get about, but I'm about going, I just pray the ends. So spirits of the seas is all those beings and energies that are related to the seas or any water really. I actually kind of wanted to call it spirits of waters, but I think spirits of the sea sounded better, so, so I just kept that name. But actually, I mean all these spirits who are in any kind of related, or all the energies that are in any kind of related to the seas, the waters, the rivers, the lakes, and all the other waters of the planet. So I think it's one of those things that we often don't really look at. We talk about the spirits of the earth, and we look at all the like the fairies and all the beings that live in the forest, all that kind of stuff. Somebody has a background noise. Let's see who it is. So um, yeah, I'm like very OCD about the background noise. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so often when we talk about the spirits of the earth, we think about forests and all that kinds of fairies and all that kind of stuff. But we often ignore the seas because the seas actually cover most of our planet. And then we keep ignoring all of that because it just seems kind of, you know, dark or empty or whatever that is. So all the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, and points of view you have about the seas and the waters, can we just run and get that? Right, wrong, good, and bad, but and both, all night, just both and beyond. And what if you allowed your awareness to be not just about the spirits of the earth or beings that are in your room or in your house, but what if you allowed yourself to be aware of the whole planet? Not just the land areas or areas where you can go, but also the deep seas where you physically might not be able to take your body, but as a being, you can still go there. Um, this <laughs> these are kind of funny zooms because they don't have Sorry, any Sorry, Satu, what did you say about the land beings and being going there? I mean... <laughs> yes. So I love this because this is kind of funny because these zooms are like no prereqs, but then at the same time I talk about all this stuff that is like I wouldn't maybe necessarily even talk at a normal talk to entities class. So um, somebody sent me a private message, but I don't see it. Oh, so yeah, so we have all these beings who live on the land. We, like for example, we live on the lands. And then there are all these other beings that we have amongst us that are on the land. So we have animals, we have uh, plants, we have trees, we have all these other magical creatures like for example fairies and elves and all those beings that we always associate living on the land, like on you know surface where we can walk. Um, but then we also have the seas that we often ignore. And it's kind of interesting to me that we know scientifically more about space, like outer space that is way, way further away from us than we know about the seas, what's in, in the deep seas. So, um, yeah. But what magic has been hidden into the deep seas 
that we haven't been allowing ourselves to access. Everything that is can we discern and create it all. Right, everyone getting back on a book on nature space and beyond. Did that help, Arsu? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Polona, did you have a question? Uh, we have a question in uh, Slovenian, and I will first uh, say it in Slovenian and then in English. Uh, torej, Marta sprašuje, oziroma napisala je, največji smo mi, se sprašujem, kaj in, in kako in zakaj se povezovati z njimi, kakšna pomoč so nam lahko. So, we have a question about what you said before, that we are like the biggest, um, greatest entity, entity, and then we have a question, how, why, and uh, uh, then we should connect with these beings. And also, what kind of help can they be to us? I love that. That was like um, questions to talk about for the next hour. <laughs> um, so the first one was about the um, us being the most dominant beings in our lives. How many things do you have in your life that you have decided are greater than you or that you cannot affect, you cannot change, or that they just, these things, they just happen to you and you can't do anything about it because you are more pathetic or smaller than those things or those beings? Everything that is can we destroy and create that. Right around getting back with a book on I just raising beings. A lot of us have, at least at some point in our lives, we have had some people in our lives that Whatever they do or whatever they say, we feel like, oh, I'm sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't exist and you can do like, whatever you do and I'll just do anything you ask me to do and I don't really, I'm wrong and you know, those people who make us feel like we are less than what we actually are. But there can be also entities who make you feel the same way. And quite often we actually make entities or people who have died and now are coming back to haunt us as ghosts, we try to make them somehow greater than we are. Nobody in your life should be greater than you are because you're the one who is you. You're the one who is living your life. And if you don't take that, um, well, if you don't take the lead, of your life and you make other people or beings or things greater than you are, it will never be your life. And everything that is can we discern and get it all. Right around get on back on book on I just read them just okay, cool. Um so everything you have done to make something else always greater than you can we destroy and upgrade that? Right everyone, good and bad, and both and I choose praise and beyond. I love to talk about this when we talk about the seas because for a lot of people, seas are quite, you know, scary and rough. And they're like, if you are um, in the sea on a boat or ship or whatever, and you have this big storm, you do feel kind of powerless in the middle of that because your body is so small. But it is just your body that is small. You as a being are not as small as your body. So everywhere where you're trying to make you as a being as small as your body, can we just try and get that? Better room, good and bad, put on book on I should poison be honest. Um, I think the other question was also um, why would we want to connect with these beings? Um, you don't have to. But since you are on the Zoom, I would guess that you have, might have some interest in, interest in it and some idea that maybe it will create something greater for you. Um, the thing with the, all the nature spirits, whether they are the ones that live on land, in the forest, or whether they are in the seas or in the air or wherever, they are here in our land, in our countries, in our um, surroundings. So if you don't acknowledge that they are there, you will be kind of walking kind of like half blinded all the time. So everywhere where you have um, put blinds on your eyes, 
to never really fully be aware of everything that is around you so that things can just happen to you and you will be the victim, can we discern and get that? Right around good and bad, but I'm back on, I just place and beyond. It's kind of like if you are walking in, um, in the streets or wherever you're walking and then you don't allow yourself to see the ground at all, you keep looking up all the time and then you're wondering why you keep tripping because you don't allow yourself to see the crown that you're actually walking on. It's the same with the spirits of the earth, that if you don't acknowledge them, but they still exist, you will keep these lines on and things just happen and you're like, what the heck? So everything that is there, everywhere where you're doing that in your life, in any area of your life, can we just run and grade that? But everyone, good and bad, but don't on, I change boys and beyonds. I love it with um, Dane here, one of the creators of Access says on the Access Bars class video, because he says that whatever you hide, you cannot change. And whatever you're willing to bring up and be aware of, you can change. And for some people, it is the awareness of entities. For some people, it's, it's money, it's their body, it's relationships. But we all have these things that we have hidden. And we pretend that it doesn't exist even though we know it's there. But then because we pretend it doesn't exist, then we can be the victim of it. So all those things in your life that you have hidden from yourself so that you can be the victim by your own choice, can we just turn and create that? Right, everyone, good and bad, but and buckle, and I just boys and beyond. And that's one of the things why I love to have the entities and especially the spirits of the earth, because you have to really lower your walls and barriers and allow yourself to be aware of, um, well, aware of everything, of those beings. And when you allow yourself to be aware of them, you will suddenly become more aware of everything because you're not holding those walls and barriers up anymore. That's what happened to me when I started taking Talk to Entities classes because I had never really had this kind of like like complete resistance to entities like some people have but i was also like yeah whatever it's there but yeah i don't really care but then i took the talk the entities class and i allowed myself to be aware of the entities that i'm actually aware of and suddenly i became more aware of everything like money and body especially things with my body started to change a lot um, because i just didn't have so much resistance to being aware in general so all the resistance to being aware that you have, can we discern and grade that? Right around, get up, put on, put on, I just boys and beyond. All the resistance that you have to being aware of, can we discern and grade that? Right around, get up, put on, put on, I just boys and beyond. And all the resistance to awareness that you have, can we discern and grade it all? Right around, get up, put on, put on, I just boys and beyond. Hey. all right and you don't have to be aware if you don't want to but if there are things in your life that are not working the way that you would like them to then if you want to change them you have to be aware of them you can't just wish that something would change for example your money situation and put it somewhere out there and just hope that maybe somebody will take care of it maybe like a fairy will come and just put money in my wallet which they could if you allow yourself to be aware of them. But um, so everywhere where you are wishing for things instead of being aware of things and asking for them, can we discern and create that? Right around good and bad, but in Papa and I just and beyond. And there was a third question, but I have no idea. Oh, it was how to have more ease or how to have tools for tools for um, communicating with these beings or something like that. Um, it was about um, how can they help us and there was while you were talking there was oh, she also said that um, she's aware that there are entities in her space uh, and she was clearing them and uh, they are staying and this is why she is asking how can she be without fear and how can uh, these beings contribute to her so it's actually connected yes with what she asked before and now cool. 
So um, those are awesome questions. Um, a lot of us, um, we are aware of entities and we just try to ask them to go away or we clear them, but they don't go away because they don't want to go away uh, or because they didn't come there to be cleared. Um, the things that we do in talk to the entities and in, in relation to entities is that we clear them, we communicate with them or we receive or we enjoy. I always like to add that. So um, everywhere where you are trying to clear entities and they don't go away, there might be something else required. So everywhere um, where you have decided that whenever there are entities, you just have to clear them and get rid of them, can we discern and clear that? That would be kind of like um, going somewhere. Let's say you go to school and you see all the, your classmates there in your class and you look at them like, oh my God, I need to get rid of them. But some of them would actually like to be your friends and create something more with you. You don't have to get rid of all of them. You can get rid of the ones that you that are not contributing or creating something greater, but you don't have to go and get rid of all of them. And everywhere where you hate people and you hate entities, and you just would you wish you could get rid of all of them, can we just try and regret that? Rather than get a weapon and book on it, boys and beyonds. And um everywhere where you are using fear or any other feelings as a way to not receive or communicate or be aware of entities in we discern and create that. Better run good and bad and book on just boys and beyonds. Um, so what have you decided about entities that makes you be afraid of them? And everything that is, can we discern and critical? Right over on good and bad, put a book on IGS, boys and beyonds. What have you decided about entities that makes you be afraid of them and not be aware of them ever? Everything that is, can we discern and credit all? Right or wrong, get about bottom buckle and I just boys and beyonds. And what have you decided about entities that makes you want to be afraid of them and never aware of them ever? Can we discern and credit all? Right or wrong, get about bottom buckle and I just boys and beyonds. What? Um. The fear is one of the distractor implants that we talk about in Access. There are a few of them and they, all of them are just designed to get you out of your awareness so that you wouldn't be aware. When you have fear, when you're scared, you're not aware because you just decide that <gasps> this thing, oh no, it's bad, it's bad, don't look there, don't look there, put it under the bed. And then you don't allow yourself to actually be aware of what it is and what you can do with it. And everywhere where you are using this distractor implants like fear to cover your awareness, you always take yourself out of the situation. You put yourself just at the effect of it instead of being able to do anything about it. So everywhere where you have decided that something or someone is greater than you, can we discern and create that? Better run, get on back, put on back, on nature's voice and beyond. And we have <laughs> and then how to um, communicate or receive with entities, it mostly comes from practice and allowing yourself to lower your walls and barriers and just be present there. Be present with those beings, whoever they are. So let's do this. So all of you, you can keep your eyes open or you can close them whatever way works for you. And um, all the resistance that you have to entities, can we just turn and create that? Better run, good and bad, but I'm both on I should spread the arms. And ask for all the beings that are not a contribution to leave the room now. Better run, good and bad, but I'm both on I should spread the arms. And then allow yourself to lower your walls and barriers. Just drop them down. Lower them more. And push them down if you have to. And everywhere where you have decided that your walls and barriers will protect you, can you discern and create that? Right or wrong, get a rapid and vocal and I just put some beyonds.
and allow yourself to push down your barriers even more. So much more that you start to relax. And allow yourself to relax into a space of no need for barriers. And keep relaxing. And while you relax, be aware of your body. Where are your hands? Where are your feet? Where is your butt? Where is your back and your stomach, your knees, your head? That's your body. And then allow your awareness to go beyond your body into the room that you're in. What else is in that room? What energies and beings can you be aware of in that room? And everywhere where you want to contract or put your walls and barriers up, and we just turn and that. Right around, get on back with a book on, I just raise my hands. And allow yourself to relax more into that room and into your awareness. And whoever is in that room or whoever it is that you're aware of, know that you don't have to do anything with them. You can just acknowledge that they are there, that they exist. And everywhere where you have decided that you always have to handle everything and everyone that you're aware of, can we just try and regret that? Better wrong, good and bad, but I'm back on I should suppose in the end. And everyone and everything that you're aware of, just allow yourself to say, hello. Hi. I see you. That's the beginning of being aware of what you're aware of. And when you allow yourself to do this more and more, where you allow yourself to be aware of the beings that are there, that are present, then you get to this point where you can actually start communicating with them or receiving from them. Ah, did anything come up for anyone when we were doing this? Does anybody have any questions? Yes, we have a question in Serbian chat. Just let me translate it first. So I have a question from uh, Anna. She's asking uh, regarding to Glop and Glom. Uh, so Glop and... Um, yeah, um, so she knows what is it, but she's asking because Glom is like this uh, vibrational net and etc. etc. Now her question is, uh, does this mean that they are sending entities to us? all this vibrational net. Cool. So, um, clop and clum are topics that we talk about at the two-day class of Toxic Entity. So I would say that it is a bit beyond, uh, beyond this free Zoom. So um, I would recommend the two-day class for that. And um, everywhere where we have decided that there's always, there has to always be somebody else who is greater than us and they're just sending stuff at us and we are not the ones who are actually choosing that. Can we just turn and get that? Right around, good and bad, but I'm back on. I just put in the arms. So to, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what did I say? Everywhere where we have decided that there is always somebody 
or something that is greater than us and that is always sending us things and whatever it is and that it's not our choice, can we discern and grade that? Right everyone get in bad put in book on nature space and beyond. Um, and everywhere where it's a nice theoretical idea that you could be the most dominant being in your life, but it is not really a reality and can never be, can we destroy and then create that? Right or wrong, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad. And everywhere where spirits of the earth and creating with the earth and creating with these beings is a nice theoretical idea, can we destroy and then create that? Right or wrong, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad, good or bad. Well, okay. Mm. What were we talking about? <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? I would just like to add something uh, regarding to this. I would like, if you can just talk a little bit about this, is when uh, people, often people hear something and they didn't take the class. I mean, I'm not talking that this is the case, but people uh, then get to the conclusions. Can you just uh, broaden up a little bit why is uh, like really a contribution to just take a class and not to listen to what people are saying? Yeah, you want to translate that question? So um, like, I'm not totally sure of all the parts of the question actually, but why, um, like, why do we not talk about certain things in, for example, this free Zoom is because it's just an hour that we have together. And then the classes, because they are longer, then we can talk about stuff in so much more detail. And also sometimes we talk about something and it starts kind of like rippling into your world and it has to kind of marinate there for a while. And then we can come back to it like some hours later on the next day and then broaden it up way more. That's why a lot of the access classes, they are for many days because a lot of the times are, we kind of need that time to like go of our mind and trying to define the things with our minds. So then we um, give your mind a little bit of time to like go of the control that it is so used to. I'm not even sure if I totally answered your question, but yeah. Yeah, Satu. okay, this is like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Satu, this is Arzu. Can I ask a question? I yep. mean, from the Turkish group? Go for it. Just one sec, I'm asking. Just one sec, bir dakika, bir saniye, bir saniye izin var. Uh, so she just moved to a city uh, in the south of Turkey by the sea, uh, by the Mediterranean Sea. She just moved there and she's not uh, in, in fact aware of the uh, sea and she doesn't uh, perceive anything about the sea. One sec. What can she ask in order to perceive the sea more? And she is aware that, that there are some st some things, but and she feels like she doesn't uh, know the right uh, thing in order to perceive what is it there. Thank you. Cool. 
Awesome. That's an awesome question. So um, everywhere where you are all looking for what is the right way or correct way to communicate with entities, or play with your awareness or create with your awareness, can we discern and create that? Right over and get wrap it on book on Aisha's Boys and Beyond. So a lot of people come to access classes and they have all these different things and then they ask the question often from the point of view of like, what's the right way? Or what is the access way? Or what is the correct way to ask a question or to play with this or change this, but there actually isn't a correct or perfect or way that would always work. But you always have to be in the question of what will work in this case, what will work in this situation, what will work for me, and what will create the greatest. So everywhere where you're looking for the perfect, right, correct answer, can we just turn and get that? Right wrong, you don't put a book on nature's face and beyond. And then ask whatever thing it is in your life where you are, for example, the seas and waters and everywhere where you would maybe like to have more connection or more awareness of these, these elements in our earth. Instead of looking for the right way, what if you now ask, what's my way of being aware of this? What would work for me here? And everywhere where you have put these elements somehow outside of you, can we discern and create it all? Right around get and back with a book on Nature's Boys and Beyond. And um, the seas and all the waters in general is kind of interesting to be aware of that because it's not the most um, natural habitat for our bodies because we live on dry land most of the time. We can go into the seas but our bodies can't really survive there very long because we cannot be underwater. We need air to breathe. So then there is always this kind of um, weird relationship with all the waters because kind of you need it. It's the, like, without it, you will die. But at the same time, too much of it will also kill you. So everything that is can be this turn and critical. Right around good and bad, and buckle, and nature is poison beyond. And all the points of view that you have about the seas and about the lakes and the rivers and the waters of the earth, can we discern and create that? Right around good and bad, but in Boko and I choose place and beyond. Ooh. All the points of view, projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections you have about the seas, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, and all the other waters of this planet, can we discern and create that? Right or wrong, you don't put on book on Nature's Place and Beyond. It's very funny because today was a really nice and sunny day in Finland. A very big surprise, but anyways. But then when we started the Zoom, it started pouring rain outside. So that was kind of cool. And I guess the waters of this planet would like to play with us. So everywhere where we have built walls and barriers around the waters, to not play with them, to not create with them, and not be aware of them, can we discern and create that? Right or wrong, good and bad, but and just place and beyond. And all of you, um, what is your relationship with the seas? What is your relationship with the lakes? What is your relationship with the rivers? And what is your relationship with the rain? And everything that is, can we discern and create it all? Right or wrong, good and bad, put in book on Nature's Place and Beyond. How many people hate rain? When it rains, they're like, oh no, it's raining, it's disgusting, it's uncomfortable, it's so cold. What if somebody, um, a person reacted to, to, to you like that? They saw you coming and they're like, no, that person again is so disgusting and uncomfortable and cold. How would you like to be in that person's life? Would you like to contribute to them? That's the kind of the same thing with the rain. What if you ask for the rain? Um, well, first of all, the relationship that you have with the rain, can we just remember that? Better wrong, you don't wrap it in book or not, just place beyond. And what if you asked, what contribution can the rain be to me? What contribution can the sea be to me? What contribution can this lake be to me? 
and what contribution can these reverse plates make? I had an interesting thing the other day. I was walking outside and it was raining. And first I went into this kind of contraction. It's like, oh, is it going to be uncomfortable? I was like, okay, wait a second, relax. I allow my body to relax and really be present with how the rain feels. How does the rain feel on my skin? How does it feel when it's going through my clothes? And, um, and then I ask for that rain to take care of my body. Every element on our planet has consciousness. And you can request things, like, like asking for a rain to take care of your body. So um, that's actually something that, if you remember after the Zoom and it starts raining, maybe you can go out and ask for the rain to take care of your body and to contribute to your body. Um, and Sato? Yeah. There is a question in Estonian, but I would have to read it a little bit and then I can translate it for you. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that is that good time? It's wrong. It's completely wrong. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, we have, um, in Estonia, there's a lot of um, trees taken down and um, um, animals and birds and all this. Uh, oneness there what uh, will happen with the uh, spirits of nature if we are destroying the nature um, can we contribute to those um, nature spirits somehow I love that question so um, that's happening in a lot of the world, really, where there's forests being cut down and all sorts of things like that being done. And all those forests and other places on the earth, they are um, they're like the original home of these beings, of the nature spirits. Um, but it doesn't have to be their only home. We can actually invite them everywhere. A lot of the time when we cut down forests, those beings who live there, they just get a bit confused because they're like, what the heck is happening here? Nobody told us the forests are being cut down or, you know, there are houses being built here. And then they are just maybe in a bit of a trauma or confused, but then we can actually just invite them and say, hey, like, look, I'm really sorry that people did this to your home. Um, let's do this. So all the places that you're aware of where something like this has been done, where the forests are being cut down or whatever it is, allow yourself to be aware of those beings who used to live there and connect with them and let them know that, hey, look, I'm really sorry that this has been done to your home. Okay, and everything that is right around getting back on back on actually straight and beyond. Um, but you are welcome here. You are still welcome to be here and point them to another forest that you know, or another place where they could go or invite them to your home if you want to. Um, and let them know that you are aware of them, that you know that they exist. And everything that is, can we discern and credit all? Right or wrong, good and bad, but in book all nature, spirit and beyond. Because this happens all of this like cutting down the forest and all of that because people just are not aware. They just don't let themselves to have the awareness what these trees or what does the earth in that area contribute or that there are these nature spirits there that are helping the earth to be functional. But when you are the one who is aware of it, you will be kind of like a beacon of that awareness in the world not everybody will see it. Some people will just ignore it no matter what. But then some people will see it. And they'll be like, wait a second. There is a different space. Why am I aware of these fairies now? Because somebody else was willing to be aware of them. So the gift that you can be in the world and the gift that you can be for nature and for this earth and the nature spirits is being aware of them. Acknowledging them. Not trying to ignore them. And um, somebody is asking, what about the spirits of the trees that are cut for producing the furniture in our homes? Yeah. And 
how can we treat them? Yeah, so what if you, um, all the furniture in your house that has been somehow produced from the earth, and the thing is, all of them are. All of the materials in a home, even if it's plastic, it comes from this earth. Somehow, at some point, the molecules that are now your plastic cup or whatever it is, they were part of this earth. So everything comes from the earth, no matter what it is. How much can you acknowledge the consciousness in all of those furniture, in all of the items that you have at your home? And acknowledge that the earth is in all of them. Yes. And everything that is another can we discern and get that. I don't about a book on just all of the things that you home, they have the molecules of consciousness and they have the molecules of the earth. Mm-hmm. Cool. That made me happy. <laughs> um, and everywhere where our first response to when we see a tree cut or whatever it is like that, or a river polluted or whatever, um, where our first response is to go into like, <gasps> no, this is so wrong and I need to fight, or you get very sad or you get emotional, and we just turn and create that. Yes. Because when you go into that reaction, you miss those points or those things where you could take action and actually change it. Everything that is, can we just turn and create all? Yes. Um, oh, okay, cool. So it's very interesting because at the moment we have this, um, what I like to call the Mexican beer virus, uh, as Gary named it, the coronavirus in the world. And, um, and a lot of people are doing all sorts of weird stuff with it and going into like all sorts of reactions and some countries are just behaving completely insanely and not allowing themselves to be aware of what is actually going on. And in some countries, you have this sense that they are just so freaking excited that there is this massive trauma that we can all have and make this huge thing out of it instead of actually just being aware of what it really is. And it's just hilarious. And one of the um, background noise. I don't know who it was, but anyways, um, so there have also been a lot of articles that I've seen about the, um, the area in China where all of this started, how that is like one of those big areas where we produce a lot of, um, a lot of the, what is it called? Like the pollution in the air and all of the, like the greenhouse gases, whatever that is, is one of those areas where that is like, is like bad or what somebody would um, say that is really bad. And now with the coronavirus there, and when they have closed everything down and there are no flights or whatever, that um, air pollution has decreased like insanely much in just this short amount of time that we um, have closed things down. So um, all of the stuff that is happening with the earth, even whatever it is like a coronavirus or trees being cut down, what if the earth knows what it is doing? What if the earth knows that, okay, this tree actually needed to be cut because it created something for someone, it created awareness for someone. And for how many of you, when you have seen those trees or forests being cut, has it created more awareness of what's actually going on? You started noticing, wait a second, there was this forest that was creating this and this and being this contribution in the world and now it was cut down, I'm not okay with this. I'm going to step up into my potency and the powers that I have so that I can stop this insanity. The earth is willing to do whatever it takes to wake us up. How much more can we Sa- do that? Da, Satu, uh, Hannah said, thank you, Satu. Um, especially for that releasing that sadness uh, because um, it's been a long time for me that I've been sad and it's, it's been hurting. Yeah. So all of you here who are more spirits of the earth and you have allowed yourself to acknowledge yourself for, 
Can you acknowledge your connection with the earth now? Right around good and bad, and I should suppose and be honest. And all the sadness and all the feelings and all the all the things that you have locked into you yourself and your body. Can we allow all of that to dissipate and release now? Right around good and bad, and and I should suppose and be honest. You holding on to it and holding on to it in your body doesn't really change it. So everywhere where you are holding on to things as a way of trying to change them, can we discern and get that? Right or wrong, good or bad, but I'm back on it. Just raising the up. Ah, and how much all of the stuff that people are doing to the earth or what people are doing, for example, with the coronavirus is just showing us how insane they are. It's kind of like what happened with when Trump became the president of the US. A lot of countries were like, oh my God, they actually did this? This is insane. We're not going to do this. And then they started electing completely different kind of politis politicians and presidents and whatever, because they saw that and were like, that just went over the line. That's insane. So everywhere where we go into trauma, instead of recognizing what something is creating, can we discern and get that? Rather wrong, good and bad, but I'm Boko and I share space and beyond. And um, all of you, um, maybe there are many here who have taken the BARS class, because in the BARS class, there is this body process called triple sequencing systems. And what we can now all do is that reach out to the earth, whatever area that you're in, just allow yourself to reach out into into the earth some for some of you might feel like you want to put your hands somewhere or um or maybe not but allow yourself to be aware of the earth the land and the seas into deep 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 into the earth and ask for tripod sequencing systems to run right everyone get on back on a buckle and i just raise and beyond you don't need to think about it you don't need to do anything else than just say earth Trifle sequencing systems run. Better run good and bad, but I'm both on my shoes, boys and beyonds. And everything that doesn't allow this process to continue to run for as long as it requires, can we discern and grid that? Better run good and bad, but I'm both on my shoes, boys and beyonds. Oh my god, people, it's almost been an hour and we talk so little about the seas. Um, <laughs> So, um, while you're doing this, all the big areas of water in the earth, all the seas, the Mediterranean, Pacific, Atlantic, the North Seas, South, um, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, whatever we have, and all the lakes, the Baikal Lake in Siberia, and all the other lakes, and all the big rivers in the world, and the small rivers, and the little ponds, and every single raindrop. Let's say hi. Hello, waters. And all the water in your body. Hello. I'm aware of you. Thank you for being here. what can you receive from all these waters that you never allow yourself to receive? What can you be with all these waters that you never allow yourself to be? And what can you contribute to all these waters that you never allowed before? More communion is possible with you, your body, the waters in your body, and all the waters of this planet. And everything that doesn't matter, can we destroy and create that? 
A really cool thing that I learned from this guy called Tim Bothams, he's an access consciousness facilitator, and he did a telecall with Gary some time ago. And, um, and they talked, it was about the earth, and they talked, for example, um, this funny thing that I always wondered if I'm somehow wrong, because whenever I have, for example, a cup of tea or something like liquid in a cup and I have a spoon, I keep stirring it forever. I just stir it and stir it and stir it and, and before I can drink it. And I always thought that I might somehow just this, this like weird OCD thing or something like that. But then they actually talked on that telecall that the natural way that the water uh, goes in nature is that it does these kind of whirlpools. It does, it has this constant movement. And that is what keeps the molecules of the water vital and alive. And, um, and then when we put the water to go to all the, like the plumbing that we have or in the bottles, we stop that movement of the water that would actually bring all the molecules and all the nutrients and all the elements into that water that makes it alive. And I've always noticed that if I don't stir the thing for a long time enough, it doesn't taste the same. It feels like, uh, it feels dead. So all the things that you have been doing in your life that you think are just some weird OCD things, but they have actually been your awareness of how to make something greater, can we just run and that? Right around going about put on book on IJ's Boys and Beyond. Does anybody have any questions? Satu, you have something on Sunday. What's going on? Ah, what's going on on Sunday? I actually have a um, two-hour online class, Spirits of the Earth, where we will look way more deeper into all of this because I feel like we just started. I'm like, oh my God, like it's already been an hour. Do you guys have three more hours? <laughs> so those uh, more hours are available on Sunday. Uh, at this online class and it's translated in some languages so if you want to join let us know and I'd love to have you there and really dive way more deeper into these conversations. Let's dive deep into the sea. Um, does anybody have any other questions? There was uh, Hannah sharing something. Um, she said that um, I have a beach uh, by my house where there's a lot of people going at summer so at the end of the summer, the beach was tired, or the, it was tired of all these people, and the water uh, started to be like, um, um, what's it called, like, um, like with the glue, like glueish, like it's not clear anymore. Yeah, like sticky, um, and, and dirty. And I had taken access to a class, and then I went to the water, and I said, "Water, take anything from me that you require." And the next day, the water was um, so cold in the beach at the beach that the people didn't want to go in the water, and the water got dressed. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. That's something that I love to do a lot. Also, whenever I go to swim anywhere, um, I just ask, I just stare and go like, "Okay, body, anything you require from me, just have that. Have that energy." And um, it's really awesome what that creates. And there's actually another thing that was really cool at um, Access has these uh, seven day classes. Now they are called six day classes, but they used to be seven day classes. And there was one um, last year in April in Langkawi, which is this tropical island in Malaysia. And one of the days we actually went out there and started the class at the sea or at the beach. And we did this kind of like session with the sea, kind of like what's asking the sea to have whatever energy it requires. But also there were many, 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 many other things that we also did there. And there is actually that part of that class is available on the Access shop. You don't need any pre-works to buy that. You can, and I think it's something like 40 euros. So it's really cheap. Um, and it is incredible. And people started um, playing that whenever they went somewhere in the nature and have that create change in the nature there. And the cool thing was that in there also, because it's this tropical island, a lot of people come there for holidays, 
and they want the water to be calm and you know warm so that they can go swimming whenever they want to instead of allowing it to be um it's this like chaos that it actually is and and after we did this session then the next day there was um the sea was really stormy and the waves were really big and it started kind of eating the beach so there was very little sand left on the beach because the sea was coming so like high up and it was pushing all this trash out of there all this plastic and shoes and all sorts of stuff it was just like angrily throwing it out but not with this like i hate you people anger but more with this like potency of like ah oh, i can do this i can clean this shit out of me because you give me permission to do that so what kind of permission for the earth to do whatever it wants or requires can you be and everything that doesn't allow that can we just run and bring that right wrong in a bop and a book on i should and everywhere where you haven't acknowledged everything that you have already contributed to the earth and are contributing just by being I don't beyond. Yes, it is called Earth Call. Um, and yes, there is also going to be a replay of this. I will post this um, call on YouTube when it's done. Uh, downloading after today and the translations will be available there as well um does anybody else have any questions satu yeah uh, turkish zoom gone <laughs> maybe it's time to finish <laughs> they are gone right now for technical reasons oh they're back <laughs> That is so funny. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for this. And um, I had a lot of fun, and I could talk about this forever. There's so much more. So if you'd like more, come on a call on Sunday. Or you can also watch the um, the other Zooms that I did earlier on YouTube. And um, and then also I got um, talked into these classes coming up as well in Croatia by the sea, by the Mediterranean Sea. That is in April and in Estonia by the Baltic Sea in May and also in Irkutsk in Russia by the Baikal Lake uh, in July. So if you would like to play even way deeper into these topics, come play with those classes. And um, yeah, thank you so, so, so much for being here. And what else can we create in the world now? Thank you. Satu, thank you so much. Love from Istanbul and Turkey from all the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Bye-bye.